episode of NTB Dialogues, a thought-provoking series which presents insightful conversations with leaders to accelerate the fight against tuberculosis. Today we have a very special guest with us, Dr. Suvanand Sahu, who is Deputy Executive Director at the Stop TB Partnership. Welcome Dr. Sahu and thanks Thank for finding some time it's for today's interview. And uh, uh, Dr. Sahu, I would like you to start by just uh, repeating and reinforcing the call to action which was launched at uh, the last IS 2019 and which has spurred and focused attention on latent TB infection and management of it, which I think is very crucial to ending TB. Yes, so um, uh, the call to action was uh, launched at the IAS meeting, which is a HIV conference. Everybody connected with the HIV world comes there. So we thought of why not take the advantage of that and do on the beginning, the day before uh, of the conference, a meeting focusing attention on TB. TB, as you know, is the biggest cause of death amongst uh, all infections. But TB is also the number one cause of death of people living with HIV. And we know that those deaths can be prevented. It can be prevented uh, by many ways, but one important thing is if we are able to prevent TB in people living with HIV. And to do that, there are guidelines there is evidence available. Uh, there are best practices that people living with HIV should be put on TB preventive therapy. By doing that, we can substantially reduce their risk of getting TB. Now, because this area was not prioritized in the past, nothing much has happened, barring a few countries like South Africa, which has been doing quite a lot on this area. Last year, in October 2018, there was a UN high-level meeting on tuberculosis, the first one. In the meeting, in the political declaration, we uh, are very happy to see, for the first time, a target, a global target on putting people on TB preventive therapy. Uh, 30 million at least have to be put on uh, TB preventive therapy between 2018 to 2022, five years. That happened when the world was putting only 1 million people. That's the data for 2017, right? So you can imagine 30-fold uh, scale up of that. So that was the background. So uh, we uh, invited partners, stakeholders, especially targeting uh, those groups, partners, country programs that are working with HIV, but also interfacing with TB. And we discussed about what is needed. So there is political commitment now. There are guidelines, international level. How do you translate that into a national level policy? How do you prioritize at the national level for implementation? How do you measure it, report back, and make people accountable for it? Right? So that was the effort there. And uh, in preventive therapy, we have uh, two groups mainly. There are many people who benefit from it. But one large group is people living with HIV. The other large group is the contacts of TB patients, active TB uh, patients. So we focused in the IAS meeting on the people living with HIV because that was the focus of the conference. And we came out with a call to action where partners said that we don't accept this status quo, we need to proceed fast. Now, uh, a number of things have happened after that. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, WHO uh, released their report uh, of 2018 data published in October 2019. It is very good to see that the number receiving preventive TB treatment of PLHIV has doubled almost. It was about less than a million uh, in 2017. In 2018, it is 1.8 million. That is significant progress. And if it goes like that, that target, that part of the 30 million, which is for people living with HIV, will be met, right? But the target is not just meeting, target is exceeding it, it's, it says at least. So 
we um, uh, we uh, expect hope and appeal to everybody that that target should be exceeded uh, and that is one part we have to also work on the contacts unfortunately the same who report reports that very little progress has happened on the contact side there is a bit of progress on contacts which are less than 5 years because this is something that was in the guideline of countries it was a policy it was not happening little bit of increase but contacts which are above 5 years was a recent guideline of who no action has happened in fact we have to work more as all countries partners on contacts of uh, tb patients um, evidence shows that um, if unless you do prevention of tb you just go on treating active tb you will not end the disease right. this is very clear very from good. all the modeling work yes. the scientific work that has been done so this is essential people need to understand that this is a high priority action we are worried that a number of countries are not thinking that way they think that they can end tb by just diagnosing and treating people who already have tb and that is a mistake we hope that th that mindset should change now you have to do a comprehensive approach while you do have to prevent others who are around the contacts other susceptible people uh, other others who have risk of developing tb by giving a simple uh, uh, treatment uh, which is uh, not difficult there are issues related to whether the pricing of the drugs diagnostics access are they there i i must say that uh, they are not ideal but they are good enough for scale up now uh, many partners including us are working on reducing the price uh, making uh, better diagnostics and drug regimens available and uh, that will come but we cannot wait for it right just for example today there was an announcement by partners stop tv partnership was also part of it but uh, united global fund uh, um, uh, and uh, some countries have come together now there will be a 60% discount uh, on one of the key uh, drugs uh, needed for it mm. uh, which wa which was cited very often in meetings by countries as a major barrier so that is now gone right uh, now there are um, uh, diagnostics available i must say that uh, in stop tb partnership we have the global drug facility and global drug facility is also mentioned in the un political declaration for all countries to uh, to procure uh, uh, drugs and diagnostics related to tb from the global drug facility global drug facility has a catalog recently the catalog was updated it's on the website uh, we have there the diagnostics for latent tb infection we have uh, the drugs for late, uh, latent tb treatment all of them with also the pricing the same pricing for all countries and available so anybody who wants to have drugs diagnostics can write to gdf and we are happy to help uh, them get the drugs and diagnostics so what i'm trying to say is uh, 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 there were some barriers but we are trying to solve the barriers not just we but uh, i must say many partners uh, there is a scientific community there are donors uh, global fund usaid uh, united i think all of them are trying to solve those barriers but now it becomes less and less um, um, uh, we have less and less excuses not to scale up preventive therapy and i would say it is unethical if you diagnose and treat a tb patient and not give preventive therapy to the contacts it is unethical that uh, a person living with hiv gets art but we don't give the individual tb preventive therapy thank you so uh, can you list some of the diagnostics uh, and treatment which have been included in the uh, gdf Uh, list recently for ltbi yeah so let me first talk about treatment you know treatment for ltbi in the past used to be uh, isoniazid mm. which yes. is very cheap mm. um it is available uh, most countries have it uh, but it's a long course 6 mm. uh, months um, and sometimes some patients may have some side effects mm. 
now we have uh, other regimens which are better shorter we have three month of just once weekly dosing we also have one which is just one month of daily dosing and these drugs con these regimen contain uh, the drug which is rifapentin which was uh, the price was high now it has uh, it has come down yeah. Uh, we also have other options. You can give uh, uh, rifampicin uh, uh, with isoniazid or just rifampicin. So there are several options for treatment. All of them are available from uh, GDF. On the diagnostic side, in the past we had only tuberculin. And those who have done tuberculin would know that you get a prick in the skin. It's uh, difficult to inject. But also you have to come back and read after uh, some uh, 72 hours, right? Uh, so it requires uh, connection with the person and so on. Uh, now we have uh, more accurate test because tuberculin is not so accurate. Uh, those accurate tests are called EGRA tests. There are two varieties approved by WHO. Both are available on the catalog of GDF. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, partners uh, are working on making these diagnostics more accessible because currently these igra based, based tests cannot be implemented at the point of care and at the primary level right mm -hmm. so you need to do specimen shipment mm -hmm. and it's a centralized lab which can perform it but uh, there is work ongoing mm -hmm. to make it uh, into a cartridge which is automated mm -hmm. which can be uh, implemented at the primary care level okay. and i must say more uh, tests will come mm -hmm. here in india uh, the Serum Institute of India also mm. has a test, new test, which is a similar skin test, mm. but is more accurate. Okay. Uh, there is also a Russian test, similar. And these tests will also bring down the cost mm -hmm. of uh, diagnosis. So this IGRA test, that is what we call the Quantiferon test, is it the same? Yeah. That is Quantiferon is the trade name. Okay. Uh, okay. So there are two varieties, one of them is Quantiferon, the okay. other one is T-Spot. Okay, yeah. so the Quantiferon is also under, is Ego. available. It's available, yes, it's available. It's available. Yeah, it's and you can see the pricing also, very transparent. Okay, yes. And right. we know that countries are unnecessarily buying at a higher price. Oh, yes, right. Yes. And we know some countries do that. Mm -hmm. We encourage countries to come to GDF right. and get it at a price mm -hmm. which is the same for the whole world. And it's, it's affordable. Uh, Dr. Sao, one thing comes to my mind, uh, it's you s rightly so the report says that in the in people living with HIV, uh, the uptake of preventive therapy has been as per what was, it is according to the target. Perhaps that is because we are giving uh, treatment to somebody who is already on treatment, some other treatment. But when it comes to healthy contacts of people with active TB, that could be a challenge also because again if I am healthy if I don't perceive any symptoms why should I go in for any treatment I think so what do you think about uh, test and treat versus only treat latent TB infection yes so um, so first of all you are right mm -hmm. that people living with HIV are coming for their ART yes. they are in touch with the system so it's easy to give this. And they're already on some medication. They are already on some, some medication, yes. right? Yes. And that's why we see the initial yes. uptake has been in that group. Yes. When you talk about contacts, mm -hmm. there are two issues. One is, I would say three issues. Mm -hmm. Number one is that they are not in the health system. Exactly. You need to do an active effort mm -hmm. to reach them at their place, you know, maybe the household. Right? So that requires active effort. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, you have to uh, uh, convince a healthy individual to take medicine whatever number of uh, and with the uh, with the explanation that this will reduce the risk and when you can imagine when the literacy is not enough in uh, in many parts of the world yes. it's a difficult situation yes. uh, but we have done that in the past uh, immunization program is a good example of yes. it right so it's possible there is another issue also that uh, they are not in the health system and you have to every time you have to put somebody on preventive TB treatment mm -hmm. you have to exclude active TB disease yes. it is not easy mm -hmm. to exclude active TB disease in the community in the household mm -hmm. you have to ask the person to come somewhere mm -hmm. in young kids it's very difficult mm -hmm. uh, to uh, rule out mm -hmm. so that is also a challenge but these are things that can be uh, overcome mm -hmm. and uh, it can be done 
and in many parts of the world we have seen that uh, this has been overcome. So by the way, we have a TB Reach initiative. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I recall that a number of uh, projects there have done uh, contact investigation, mm. which is the first point mm. of putting people on preventive therapy. Mm. And there is also, uh, I recall, uh, we have done a kind of review paper with all the different evidence of TB Reach projects and beyond mm. and collected that. So th all those evidence are available and other people have also worked on it. We have, um, uh, from Stop TV, uh, we do something called out-of-step report. I don't know whether you yes, know yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. The last okay. report was 2017, mm -hmm. and we did write about uh, preventive TB mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. The main finding there was countries had policy mm -hmm. for uh, under five children, mm -hmm. uh, contacts, and people living with HIV. Implementation is big gap. Mm -hmm. This year, uh, we are also starting another one. Which in which we will look at the updated policies. Have they included the adults' uh, contacts? Have they included new regimen and so on? Yes. So that information will also be available. Yes. Uh, because, see, from a lay person's point of view, say, I may be carrying <coughs> latent TB infection within yeah. myself. And if I am asked to be, to take treatment, I, first of all, I'm healthy, fine. But there is no proof that even I'm harboring that that latent bacteria. Yeah. So I would go, if I'm asked, personally, if I'm asked that you test, okay, if I test positive, I will definitely go no. for treatment. But without testing, I would hesitate to go in for treatment a no. as a common person. For say, even for diabetes, if, I'm te if I Agreed. test positive, I would definitely take treatment. Agreed. So what is your take on uh, test and treat or simply no. treat? No, so test and treat is ideal. No? Yes. Okay. Because if you do that, mm. uh, you will not expose those who do not have the infection mm. to unnecessary yes. treatment. That is for sure. Right. Right. The current guidelines of WHO mm. recommends a test only in certain situations. Mm. Mm. But if you are under five contact, mm. the risk is high enough that WHO guidelines say that you don't have to test. Mm. Doesn't say that don't test. Mm, but don't have, don't to. have to test. Mm, yes. uh, uh, and same with people living with mm, HIV. Mm. But when we are dealing with above five years exactly. uh, age, mm, mm. Uh, uh, the recommendation is to consider in the local setting mm, mm. what would be the policy. And countries have to take the lead and decide whether they want to test or not. For example, if in a country you have data to show that, uh, let's say, 80% of contacts are infected you will have a different strategy there. You will rethink that do you need to test if 80% are positive. Mm -hmm. But if in a setting you have only 20% positive, then of course it makes sense. You have to you know, do the testing there. Now, this issue will become easier when we have tests which can be performed at the point of care, exactly. which is coming. Right. Right. Because of the uh, current tests which are more complex, mm -hmm. it is a uh, higher level lab that performs it. It is also you have to spend some money. Mm -hmm. Uh, transport the person or the sample uh, it uh, uh, it is different now but this should change uh, we believe that as we progress further uh, it will become more a norm of testing and giving only to those positive TB preventive therapy right it's very interesting in the booth of stop TB mm. here in the conference we are asking a question you are also welcome to answer okay. it's a uh, I think it's a uh, iPad or a computer okay. something like that very simple question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a test for TB? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's very interesting answers mm -hmm. you can see. Mm -hmm. It could be any test, you know, active uh -huh. TB test. No, any, 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 any. I am India. Mm -hmm. I have seen so many TB patients here. I am a doctor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Nobody tested me for TB in this country. Right. We know that health workers are, are at, at increased at risk. Of TB, right? the risk yes. But when I went to Geneva, mm -hmm. I got tested. Mm -hmm. I was positive for TB infection. So what we are trying to also do on that uh, test and treat is, mm. ideally, everybody in a high burden setting mm. should know mm. whether they are free of TB or they have TB infection or they have TB disease and act accordingly. If you're free, you stay free, prevent. If you have infection, you take preventive therapy uh, or reduce the risk, whatever is. Uh, and if you have active disease, you treat. That is ultimate. Yes. You know? Universal health coverage should provide that, right? Knowing but in the, the time being, in the, the time TB being, status. yes, our TB yes. Status. that means you have to test a lot of right. healthy people. Right. Right. To do that is not easy, mm. but uh, 
we are trying to start that. Uh, you know, TB, TB is much behind. Uh, HIV is much ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, you yes, test and treat. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, uh, I believe that that is the ultimate one, and that should that should happen. Right. Yeah. And as it is, we go for our medical checkups, annual checkup. We get so many tests done. Uh, without even thinking about it, blood tests and, yeah. and blood pressure and lot many yes. things even those who those yes. who can afford to do that. Yes. But we never think of yes. even HIV. We don't think of now and uh, tuberculosis. Of course, yes. it's not yeah. on the radar. So Such things you see. The future is to protect people from getting diseased. Yes, right. Prevention, yes. In that effort, if multi disease uh, tests are done, it'll be more feasible. Yes. Right. Yes. We were very happy when India announced. I don't know where it is now. Uh, maybe there is some progress on that. India announced that if, uh, uh, when you reach every citizen, when they reach 30 year of age, they are welcome to a health and wellness clinic mm -hmm. where yes. they will be tested for five things. Mm -hmm. We were very happy mm -hmm. to see tuberculosis among those mm -hmm. five things. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the future, I think. Right. Yeah. And, and that removes the But that also, also means that TB tests mm -hmm. uh, will improve because yes. once there is a demand for okay. better tests, yeah, yeah. research mm -hmm. and scientific world will give you that that kind of test that can be implemented mm -hmm. currently people are bogged down and saying that the tests are not good so we will not do mm -hmm. but once you do create the demand test will come exactly exactly one more last question stop tv partnership you had to work with partners to gather enough support to focus on latent tb which was still now not on the radar some of the challenges which you face there or would you like to share how how you got about it? Uh, so, Stop TB partnership is a global partnership yes. and quite a diverse one. Yes. We have governments, we have uh, high burden okay. governments, we yes. have donor governments, we have um, uh, civil society, we have academia, research, mm -hmm. um, uh, and technical partners as well, right? So, uh, in the past, uh, people believe that TB will come down rapidly if you implement the DOT strategy that was announced by WHO in the early 2000 and late 1990s. It didn't happen, right? Mortality reduced, but the incidence remained uh, high. Drug resistance uh, complicated and all that. Uh, then came the Sustainable Development Goal agenda, where it was very clear that infectious disease you have to end because there are other diseases that you have to focus, right? Mm -hmm. If you say that you have to just control and live with TB forever, mm -hmm. nobody is going to pay any attention. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of advocacy that time to change that. And we were very happy that WHO took it on board and then TB strategy actually talked about ending TB. Yes. You know? Otherwise, it would have been a mess. Now, when you, when you look at the science of how do you end TB, mm -hmm. it is impossible to end unless you prevent. Initially with preventive therapy, but as we proceed further, mm -hmm you need a vaccine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now that understanding, when it flows down to different partners, to countries, uh, it takes its own time. Some countries have a quick uh, absorption of science and they give the benefit to the people, right? Some have more complicated systems. Some partners are more traditional, yes. conservative, mm -hmm. whereas some are more bold. We have tried to be here uh, uh, very bold, uh, we have tried to be, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, trying to say something that is also impossible, so that people at least, uh, if you if you if you drag people to the other extreme, mm -hmm. you know, the it slow movers will also come somewhere, some, right? Some poverty, uh, we actually pushed for even a bigger target mm -hmm. for the UNHLM, mm -hmm. but we are very happy that the world agreed for 30 million at least. So the wording was at least. At least. I still feel that amongst all the targets in the UNHLM, this is the most uh, unambitious target. But at least we moved there. Yes, I had we not moved. made this demand, right. uh, we were we would have never moved. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But even now, there are people who doubt. Mm -hmm. We met them, some of them in mm -hmm. this uh, conference because it's a huge conference. Mm -hmm. But it is our uh, work now to convince not just ours. You know, we have uh, uh, two thousand partners mm -hmm. across. Our board is very supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, the donor global fund mm -hmm. has prioritized it in the next funding cycle. Mm -hmm. right? There is catalytic funding available for TB preventive therapy amongst people living with HIV, also amongst contacts. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so when, once the donors are aligned, mm -hmm. uh, the country leaderships have signed up mm -hmm. to uh, this commitment. 
now the next thing is we need to act we need to make people act implement very important is measure if you look at the WHO report yes, yes. most countries are still not reporting mm. measure mm. and fix accountability and consider is unethical not to provide preventive therapy for something that we know will benefit the person thank you very much anything thank else you. you would like to say or as a message to for no I think uh, yes. besides preventive therapy we yes. have to also do many other things yes one of our priority has been in the last few years how do we find this missing people with TB? Mm -hmm. They are in millions, mm -hmm. and if you don't find them, this they they don't get treated. They may die, but they can also spread the disease. Yes. I must say there has been a lot of progress mm -hmm. in the last few years. Mm -hmm. If you see the uh, global fund strategic initiative and catalytic funding for this aspect, there were 13 countries. Very good progress, I must say. For the first time, they have put huge number of people who were previously missing on treatment and that's another area that we should see more progress we have to also deal with drug resistance mm -hmm. but because of time i will not right. get into that mm -hmm. that's also something that we need to deal with thank you very much friends we were in conversation with dr subhanan sahu deputy executive director at the stop tb partnership for this ntb dialogue series of cns Thank you very much. Thank you. It was my pleasure.